shot. So, returning to Squad, as well as it recently being on sale, has meant a lot of new players like me coming in or coming back to the game. But for someone like me, or the guys that I regularly play with, this isn't really a scary thing. Regular armor players, or people who have even small experience with Squad, will adjust pretty quickly to the order of things. But for any genuinely new players though, like maybe some of you guys who are watching this will feel often pretty overwhelmed by what it is you're going to be doing, where to go, why you're doing it, and how to actually get an enjoyable experience out of the game without just feeling frustrated. Now pretty soon I'll try to put together one of my from start to finish beginner guide videos, but for now here's some tips on what you should and shouldn't be doing when you're first joining the game. Important things you need to know first is that in Squad, having a working microphone to listen to others and following your orders. All of these things are really, really important. First up, with any new game, get yourself comfortable. Go and check out the controls, familiarize yourself with your sensitivity settings, your key bindings, and in general how the weapons feel in the game. Now Squad happily has a shooting range where you can go and do all of these things. Go and spend some time just getting comfortable with this stuff. It's not going to replicate live fire situations, but it's going to help you not worry about the very basics, so you can pay more attention to the important things like communication. For keybinds in Squad, I actually change very little. The only things that I change up are my binding for my map to my forward mouse thumb key, so I can easily quickly bring up that to check on positions and so on. Now, my second mouse thumb key, I have that changed up as the weapon selector for easily switching between semi and fully automatic, and the middle mouse, I always have that as crouch. Next up, something really important is how to understand using your menu overlay, how to join a squad, and in general, team up with others. So by pressing the enter key, that'll bring up an overlay of your map on the right and your squad elements on the left. At the top you have a team tab, a squad and a roll button. The team lets you choose to switch sides, the squad tab lets you create or join a squad, and the roll tab lets you, yes, choose your role. When you join around you should wait for experienced squad leaders to set up squads, because a squad leader role in squad is not like, say, Battlefield. You need to be able to actually communicate very clearly, deal with messages from your own squad and other squads. You need to place map markers, come up with a plan for your squad to follow out and ensure they execute it, as well as building fobs, working logistics. It's a lot to deal with, and you should wait until you understand the game more before you try and take that on. With that said, it's always really positive to have new people jump into a squad leader role in this or in any game because it's something people generally don't want the extra stress of having to do, but it's very, very valuable if people actually step up and try that out. Often people feel intimidated, but you shouldn't feel intimidated. Once you feel comfortable with the game, you should, you know, make that effort to try it out and see how you get on. You will often see squads actually take some time to be created at the start of a round. This is because squad leaders either might take longer to join than you, or they're just waiting for other players to be connected before they form that squad. Once squads are made, it's time to join, but an important word on squad size and class restriction. In other games, you may want to take a squad size of just you and your friends, maybe three to four people. This is generally not a good idea in squad. You won't be able to just run around racking kills like a boss, and it's probably just going to end up with you having a frustrating, unenjoyable time. In squad, class choices are restricted by squad size, so if you have a full squad, you're going to get all the class choices. If you are just a squad of three people, you're really only going to get the bare bones rifleman rolls, and that's all. Full squads get the best classes like the anti-tank and the snipers and so on, because the game rewards teamwork. In a small squad as well, you're going to have much less flexibility and you're going to struggle to maintain your respawn as easily. So try to join a squad that is half or nearly full and choose a basic class. On the map, your respawn points are those yellow dots, and there are two different kinds. One is a fob and a rally point, but they both look the same, those yellow dots on the map. A fob, or a forward operating base, is a point that can be constructed by a squad leader. This allows you to respawn there without penalty, but it does use tickets still. A very fast word on tickets, in most game rounds you're going to have tickets and when you die or you get killed that's obviously going to use a ticket when you respawn. Um, if you suicide that'll also use a ticket. If you get downed and then you get medicked back up again, you won't lose a ticket. Now Rally Point is a small mobile respawn placed by a squad leader. This has limited tickets to spawn off of that and when you see on your map there are less than three spawns you should really remind your squad leader to place down a new one. Once the last spawn is used it will disappear and your SL will need to place a new one down. Just to be clear these rally points are not extra tickets it still takes it from your ticket pool but it's just that you can only spawn at those rally points so many times before a new one needs to be placed down. 
Both a FOB and a Rally Point can be destroyed by the enemy if they discover the location, and squad leaders need one squad member with them in order to place them down. They also must not be too close to enemy positions. At the beginning of a round, do not automatically spawn in at your main base. Your squad leader might want to drive very quickly to somewhere in a small vehicle, then place down a rally, rather than transport everybody in a big truck. So ask your SL or wait for them to tell you how they want you to begin the game. Lastly, if you get stuck or you just need to respawn, there isn't a menu option for that. What you're going to need to do is going to hit the tilde key and then type respawn, then press enter and you'll respawn. You will have to obviously wait to respawn in with the penalty. As with any realistically leaning military simulation, communication is critically important. If you've never had to do this before, again, it can be confusing or overwhelming. So let's break this down very simply. In squad, you have three ways of communicating. Your local voice using the V keybind, your squad voice using the B keybind, and your command channel using the G keybind. Local voice allows other players to hear you locally from any squad. Squad voice allows, yes, your squad members to hear you, and command is for squad leaders to speak to other squad leaders, or for an SL who has taken the command role to generally organize everything. All you need to worry about initially is your squad channel. This is the most important one. So that's the B keybind. I hit him, I hit him once. Okay, get positions. Get positions now, get positions. Squad 1, want to do a coordinated push onto uh, Poppy? Squad 2 is capping Poppy, Squad 2 is capping right now. They're going to react, so push in as hard as possible. Copy that, we're trying to push in. Guys, okay, somebody, yeah, a AWAX, run. AWAX, I want at least you, someone watching the rear, watch the rear door. Twenty-five percent capped. Guys, do not let them in. I think they've left that back door as the only route in. So maybe get somebody else cyber get eyes on that as well. Yep. All right. Good job. Get some solid positions here, guys. Let's hold this. Now, your squad leader, if they are half competent and actually doing their job, will give you orders as to where to go. They'll place markers on your map to show you where they want you to move and attack. All you need to do is listen, and if he gives a command, it's helpful to tell them understood or copy that. So he knows you've heard and understood, and he doesn't have to worry like, are they going there? What are they doing? So you need to, it's all about, you know, just helpful cooperation and telling everyone, yes, I know what's going on. If you are unsure or you do have a question, don't just sit there not knowing. Wait for your squad comms to be clear and then ask your question. Wait for an answer. If nobody replies immediately, they might be busy, they might be under fire, so communicating with another squad or planning something out. So wait for a minute or so. If you get no reply, ask politely again. Squad leader, did you copy me? He should respond and give you a clarification. If not, just ask one of your other squad mates around you in local, or worst case situation, just use your own initiative, because that's better than nothing. Now, when making callouts for any enemy that you have seen, this is very important. Giving clear identification on enemy and their direction and their general location of numbers is critical for successful squad operation. You can first give a quick communication on your squad channel like enemy contact west. This gives your squad a rough idea of where the enemy are. You then want to give them some more details so you could follow up by saying I see enemy moving west to southwest through that tree line. I estimate it's three to five infantry. That's going to give them a little bit more detail. If you're, say, looking into a town, you're going to want to ensure you can clarify which building you're looking at. So saying it's the tall building or it's the one on the right is basically useless unless those are the only buildings which could be seen as tall or to the right. So look for identifying features. For example, is the building you see enemy near the only building of a certain colour? If so, you could say, I see three enemy at the yellow house, or does it maybe have features outside of it, like a low concrete wall or a car, something to allow your squad mates to easily identify it. Now, if you're in an open area, saying I see enemies on the hills, when there are hills all around you, is a pointless communication. You need to give a compass direction, and then if possible, a grid reference. Now to begin with, don't worry about grid references, but just a general direction is gonna be good enough. Compass bearings are also useful. 
On your compass you'll see a range of numbers and these are going to change depending on which direction you are looking. A bearing is only useful though really in relation to people specifically near to you because it's going to change depending on your distance and physical position from other people. It is a helpful way to give a more specific direction to teammates near to you who want to know exactly where you are looking. So you could communicate it easily by saying something like, that guy, he's on the first floor window, he's second from the right, and he's got a bearing of 030. That's going to mean that they can look quite easily, they understand exactly where you're looking at. And that's basically all there is to communication. Some general good rules to follow are, listen to others, follow your commands, give short, clear information, do not speak over others, and sometimes, of course, these aren't always going to be possible, but just try to keep to this format. It's kind of like a best practice. Oh my god. There are multiple game modes in Squad, and they don't play out as your usual, more casual shooter might. The two best beginner modes to find and play, in my opinion, are Advance and Secure, and your standard Conquest. A capturable objective in Squad is marked with an orange arrow. One you need to defend is marked with a purple shield. Now, Advance and Secure, or AAS, is basically a tug of war over flag points between each team. You both start from your main base and you must capture points in order. You can only capture one point at a time in a preset order. Once all the bases are secured by one of the teams, you must fight to gain supremacy over the map. And this is going to bleed your enemy's tickets. If a flag is neutralised by the enemy, you cannot capture the next one. You must be in control of your defending position before capturing the next. If both teams neutralize their attack point at the same time, your team must secure your defending flag before you can capture your attack flag. You'll bleed enemy tickets each minute based on how many control points you have secured. Conquest is a standard game mode of capturing flag locations on a map. They can be capped in any order. Both sides begin with 400 tickets. They're bled by controlling points. That's it. Now, Invasion is similar to Territory Control, and also Advance and Secure, except unlike Advance and Secure, you don't need to worry about defending and attacking. You're either protecting a point or attacking it, and that's it. So in Invasion, the defenders want to focus on just digging in and taking down enemy armor as much as possible. The attackers want to focus purely on laying pressure on the defenders as hard as possible and they need to get in there, dig out those enemy fobs and take control of the point. This is a particularly difficult mode for the attackers. It's akin to something like Conquest Assault. They start with less tickets and their task of running over a heavily defended enemy position is very, very challenging. Unlike other modes of the defending team, they also get forward spawns, so not just spawning at their main base. Uh, it's similar to a fob, their temporary spawn locations alternate to main base to allow the defenders to spawn closer and set up defences to meet the attacking team. This is to prevent those attackers easily just steamrolling through after they've cleared out one point. Knowing these objectives should give you an understanding of what you should be doing, so remember them and learn by following your squad's actions in the games. I recommend AAS and Conquest first because these are more straightforward than the other modes. They rely on the very basic concepts of basically moving and attacking and move and defend. Now, the squad is not like other shooters. It's punishing. Going into the game, you need to be prepared, especially starting out, that you might end up becoming fodder. And often, it is a hard game in many respects to get into, but once you settle in, it's very good fun, for the most part. Public team cooperation dependent, of course. Games of Squad can last a long time, they rarely finish inside of 30 minutes, and with this in mind, don't feel you have to rush everywhere all the time. The damage model for Squad is very high, so you can often get shot out of hand within the first few rounds, and this makes any incoming fire to you genuinely very dangerous. You should actively seek cover. The penalties for dying are often severe as well because you're going to need to wait often up to a minute to respawn and then using your rally point respawns up quickly can sometimes leave you without anywhere to respawn but far back into your map. You need to have eyes of the hawk in this game as with armour because you see that tiny little dot that's smaller than a millimetre moving in that tree line 500 metres away? Yeah, that, that dot is about to kill you. Running into a building without checking corners? You're dead. Crossing a street without smoke? dead. Open field, dead. Dead, dead, dead. It will happen. Be prepared for it. Oh, and did I mention there's no kill cam? Yeah, there's no kill cam. 
So snipers and guys heading out in buildings can be a major pain in the ass. It's part of the game, so again, deal with it. What should you do with all these threats then? It sounds like it's going to be just a misery. Well, it needn't be. You just need to be aware that the enemy are going to use every option they have to ensure that they are staying alive and you are not. This is why Squad is a game where you need to be alert, switched on, and most importantly, use that mush in your head to figure out a best course of action. Taking a detour around an open area is sometimes the only way you're going to be able to move up to an enemy base to clear it out. Because by the time you're halfway across that field and they start shooting, you're not going to have time to figure out where it's coming from before they've killed you all. So don't give them that opportunity. If you absolutely must cross an open area, and sometimes it is the quickest option, but it might be something like a street that's covered by enemy, throw smoke out or get someone to put some suppressing fire because suppressing fire actually works in squad better than almost any other shooter because it generally makes people get their head down because danger. The biggest tip that I could give Keep your bloody head down. Seriously, any opportunity, get in good cover. Don't stand around like a pleb waiting for some unseen enemy to just pick you off. Take cover, get against those walls, get behind barrels, take cover, every opportunity. So I think that's it, my five small, not small tips on how to survive getting into squad. I hope that's been helpful for you and I'll try to put together future tutorials should you guys find it helpful. Thanks for watching as always. If you enjoyed, please push the like button. It helps me and the channel. This is LT. I'll see you for more squad next time around. Getting out of shipping yard on the southwest and we're going to wrap around. Inside. Commander, sh on shipping yard is taking accurate mortar fire now. Honestly, it sounds like it's coming in from northwest. I know it's hard to hear. Hey, uh... Yeah, hard. Go some sand down, man. Come on, my guys, believe that mortar fire is coming northwest, northwest.